Hey there guys, Kevin and Brandon here with your comic reviews this week. We got some awesome Marvel, DC, and Image books. We got some IDW, some Boom, and as always, some super awesome Dark Horse, so let's get to it. Boom! Alright guys, Brandon here, and I got to read Batman number zero. It's a really cool Batman book without Batman being in it at all. We get early Bruce Wayne, uh, right when he gets back from his journeys abroad, and he hasn't really become Batman yet, he's still trying to figure out what kind of a symbol he wants to be, where he's at. Uh, you get the introduction of the Red Hood gang, which we've yet to see, but uh, the end of the story promises that we'll be seeing more of them in 2013, which I'm really excited for. There's a really cool backup story as well, featuring all of the Bat family, a young Dick Grayson, Jason Todd, Tim Drake, Barbara Gordon, and sort of what they were doing at the time that Batman came about and started. I, I've loved this book from the beginning. I'm excited to see how this stuff carries into the next chapter of the book. I'm giving this five out of five nerd skulls. Check it out. Hey there guys, Kevin here with my comic reviews this week and I got to read It Girl and the Atomics number two. Now I'm a huge Mike Allred fan, uh, but I never really got into Mad Men all that much. He has some other great books and he does some really, really great artwork for other people, but I just never gave, got into his creator and stuff. And this is one of his spin-off series from Mad Men. It's actually a girl is a girlfriend of another character in, in the world or whatever, but really, really good. It was actually very surprising how great this book was, being that it was second issue, didn't know too much about it. Um, but it's a very traditional superhero story, very like kind of like the way it's set up. Um, it, gr or, uh, yeah, it Girl is not a superhero per se. She has a personality and a persona and yada 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 but she doesn't actually really fight crime she has like a video game and she's she's like a symbol it's it's interesting to see how it's focusing on her when she doesn't really do the thing that these people normally do but she is in this issue and and it it's cool to see that cool to see her thrown into that because you really don't get that unless you're rereading a spider-man origin because they're going to write four million of those or something of the like but either way, check this out if you're looking for something a little different maybe a little Venture Brothers-y because that's kind of what I was getting not as vulgar but still definitely funny lighthearted, and a great time because it's just a really good book so check this out it girl in the atomics number two i am giving it four out of five nerd skulls hey guys uh, i read doctor who annual this week and it's composed of four stories uh and they're all obviously the 11th doctor which isn't my favorite thing but i think we all know this by now um, what i did enjoy about it was the first story they got off to a really great start it had some Fez humor. They, it, they went to Fez, and there were an excess of Fezes, and I was immensely amused. And they used the Slitheen, who are one of my favorite enemies from one of the best planets ever to pronounce. And they were cheesy as ever, and it was great. And then from there, the other stories just didn't live up to it, and it just kind of lost pace for me. Um, it might have been because they used a lot of new villains that I don't know, which is cool, generally. Um, but just because they set it up so well with the Slitheen, I just wasn't feeling the rest of it. Uh, I, I think it's worth reading the Slitheen if you can get a hold of that story, but I don't think it's worth paying $8 for this issue. So I'm going to give it three nerd skulls. Next up, I got to read Frankenstein number zero. This book is awesome, and this is really cool because we get the origin of Frankenstein, like a full origin. It's not really leading into anything. It, it tells you exactly where Frankenstein came from, how he came to be, what he's gone through on his road to working with Shade. Uh, the artwork's incredible. The story's incredible. Pick this up. I'm giving it four out of five nerd skulls. So I also got to read Manhattan Projects number six this week. And Jonathan Hickman, man, that guy can write a comic book that can confuse you and blow you away at the same time because at the end of this issue, maybe I've missed a bunch of stuff. I don't know. I think that's what it was, but it was, it was intense. <laughs> Everything was really, really fast paced. You get a lot of backstory concerning a really minor character that turns out to actually kind of be a big deal. Um, and the end of the issue is really, really like cliffhangery. But at the same time, I did not catch a lot of things. I, I think I missed a lot. So I'm going to go back and reread all these issues. But at the end of it, you're left wondering what the hell's gonna happen and it's a really really good feeling to have at the end of a story arc and especially at the end of any comic book because you want to read that next issue I can't wait for issue seven and I actually cannot wait to go back and reread one through five uh, one through six actually because just a great great story overall the artwork was really really good it fits this book really well 
It's just the artist and the writer are really in tune with each other, and that's just the making for a really great comic book. So overall, I got to give this story five out of five nerd skulls, and I highly recommend you check out not only this issue, but all past issues on this book because it's one of the best put out there. Hey guys, I read Stumptown number one, and I have to be honest, when I first picked it up, I went, Stumptown? What type of a title is that? But um, I was actually very uh, pleasantly surprised by it. It's about this um, private investigator who's starting her new uh, business, so she's, she seems to, at the very beginning, not be quite sure, because she's just a little bit flustered being in this new office. Um, but once she gets this case, which revolves around a rock star's guitar being stolen, she just gets into it. She's really ballsy, and I'm very excited to see where the rest of the story goes. It's really interesting, this, this uh, guitar story. It's more interesting than I thought it would be. Um, I'm going to give this book four nurse skulls. Next up, I got to read Star Wars, Lost Tribe of the Sith. This issue shows a lot of history of the Lost Tribe and the planet, and uh, you, you actually really get a feel for everything that's gone on and how they're where they're at now. There's this big secret weapon that they keep talking about that is unleashed in the final page, and it looks like some big stuff's going to happen at the end of this story arc. I'm going to keep reading this. I'm giving it three out of five hundred skulls. All right, guys, I also got to read Green Lantern Corps number zero this week. Now, I'm a huge Green Lantern fan. But I'm not really much of a core fan. I love Hal Jordan, and I love what they're doing with that book right now. Um, but everyone else, they're background characters for me. That's the way I see it. Um, so I decided to give this a chance, see how it was. Uh, Guy Gardner is probably my least favorite Green Lantern. And this issue kind of made me like him. Uh, and I'm not going to lie. It's, it, was, it was well set up. Uh, the beginning was a little weird. But for the most part, you really understand Guy Gardner and how kind of stubborn he is, why he's stubborn, his family issues, all this crazy stuff. There was uh, a, a really cool dynamic between him and his dad that kind of explains his short-temperedness. Um, you know, family drama, whatever. But still, great issue. Um, it really pulled at the heartstrings at one point, and then it kind of just, at the end, it fizzled away. So not the best Green Lantern-esque story I've read, but still pretty good. I'd highly recommend it to anyone wanting to expand their Green Lantern liking and you know universe not just read green lantern check this book out but yeah take it with a grain of salt because the artwork wasn't that great and the story didn't really follow through as much as i would like it to so i will check out the the rest of this you know green lantern core and i don't know how i'm going to feel about it but i would definitely recommend it to anyone who's a green lantern fan this is going to be a three nerd skull book hey guys i read the incredible hulk number 13 and this is actually um, a pretty interesting place to jump in for the first time. So if you haven't been reading it, uh, I would say don't worry about it. And it, it's in the middle of a story where um, Bruce Banner has gone crazy and there's a l he's kind of against Hulk. And now it seems like he's leaning towards the place where the tables may be turning and he may be finally working with the Hulk. Um, and I find it really interesting just to see him in this different kind of crazy mindset and he goes face to face with Dr. Doom and that ends up being really interesting, a very interesting exchange to read. Um, I'm going to give this book three and a half nerd skulls. Lastly, I got to read Before Watchmen the Comedian, number three. These, before what I know we've said a hundred times, these books have been awesome and this one really shows the comedian in the light that I feel we all kind of see him in. Uh, this is kind of the turning point in his career where he just is done caring and he is just being who he wants to be for himself and it, I, I love this. This I can't say enough good things about this title. I'm tempted to see where the next couple issues take you on this because this kind of seemed like a really good ending but yeah I'm giving this four to five nerd skulls. Be sure to check it out. Alright guys I got to read Avengers vs X-Men number 11 this week and Oh man, this is a really, really good issue. Marvel's event books are always on point, and especially this one has been really, really good. The cliffhangers they leave you with are awesome. The way they start them back up is really good. The artists they've been having on them, for the most part, really good. This issue especially because Olivier Coipel was on it. And it just, oh, Scott Summers is my personal favorite X-Men. And the fact that he's pretty much the biggest dick in the world right now, kind of makes me happy because he's always been a pushover. and. He's, he's had enough of it. And in this issue, it, he just gets pushed over that edge. And with him having the Phoenix Force, 
That's not what you want to do. And it happens and you see it coming halfway through and there's some deaths that happen that you did not see coming. I did not see two of these deaths happening. And I really hope they're not dead, especially one character who I thought I would not want dead, but I don't want her dead at all because who's going to be that snarky bitch for you know my X-Men reading? Either way, I'm giving it away too much. There's some really cool comebacks. There's some really awesome fighting. It, it starts off pretty much with a giant, giant fight, and it's going on. You don't even realize it. It's just beautifully drawn, beautifully, beautifully written, and I cannot wait for the last issue of this series. One more issue, three weeks from now. Cannot wait. This one, though, gets five out of five nerd skulls. Hey guys, I got to read Adventure Time Marceline number three, and this book is so much fun to read. Um, it's really awesome to see a little bit more of Marceline than you get to see in the show. Um, this one revolves around the, her band getting a bad review in the paper and how she deals with it, and it's, it's really well written. It's very great humor. It's really fun. I'm giving it four nerd skulls.